<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another TokuCast review. Yes, welcome, everyone. Marcus's favorite common writer, ladies yep. and gentlemen, prepared yep. for an hour and a half of Marcus sucking dick. Uh, it'll be just like a Wednesday, but I'm very, very excited for this episode uh, because, you know, it's my favorite of all of the Kamen Riders, Kamen Rider Blade, episode 41. I just looked it up to make sure we actually have Damn it. <laughs> Literally just pulled it up, too. <laughs> but yeah, episode 41, Kamen Rider Blade. I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. We're getting to that period where it's just like, yes. Because after this, we're doing something short. And then it's Decker Ranger Month. Oh, God, that's right. It's Decker Ranger Month. Hey! <laughs> if you know what that's from, because it is Tokusatsu, please... Put it in the comments because we love that moment. Ah. But yeah, Comrade Blade. This show has two openings, but at the moment we're only going to talk about one because the other one doesn't come in until about halfway through. I like it. The first one is okay. I feel like we've reached the point where all the openings are starting to sound the same. No, again. it's just the fact that her voice is it's, it sort of reminds me of Beverly's voice in the villain opening. It seems a little bit underwhelming. I mean, it's not a bad Apathetic. opening. Yeah. Again, we've kind of we're starting to reach the point where most of the commentator openings are starting to sound the same to me, unless there's something different about it, like O's or Hibiki. or Hibiki. But so we've just reached that point where I'm just like opening, and I still like. Also, it. because I just wasn't looking forward to this show, not because I don't like it, but because I knew I was going to deal with him for two weeks. <laughs> this is great, isn't it? It's yeah. fun times. Yeah, commentator Blake. Uh, let's start with the very first episode, the Indigo Warrior, where we get introduced to two suits, basically, immediately. One on a bike, and another one fighting a monster inside of a cave. Let's well, go ahead and talk about Let's Okay, suits. I'm going to get this right off the bat. As opposed to, except Chalice, and possibly, I can't remember the spider one's the name. Angle. Yeah, I don't like the suits in this show. I like them. I don't like Blade's suit especially, I don't like Garen's, or I just don't like anybody's, because... One, the colors are boring. <laughs> Gray and navy, boring colors, not really eye-popping. Now, in terms of the design themselves, I think the combination of... The beetle on the card. The beetle on the card, the suits of the playing cards and everything, I thought that was all very well done. But they're just... It was so dull. And I couldn't... That's one of the reasons why I couldn't really get into the show, because just like with freaking Ultraman. If I don't look if I don't like looking at the suit, I'm not gonna like the show. Got that off my chest, but Chalice looks awesome. Moving on. He's still terrible. Uh, but no, yeah, he's I, absolutely I, terrible. No, I'm talking about you. No. <laughs> but yeah, I That's love, my opinion. You can go suck a dick. I love the blade and the Garen suits. I think they're designed extremely well. I love the color palette, especially because Navy's one of my favorite colors. Well, yeah, but I, my biggest problem is the gray. Like, there's got to be a better color than And it's so much of it. But I will admit, the power-up forms that he gets, you know, Jack and King and all of that, those look fine. I actually love King form. We're going to talk about that one a little bit. Yeah. But, and I like Chalice's ultimate form. I like... We'll get to those. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the first episode, it's really interesting that we don't end up seeing the actual main character fight first. We end up seeing the other writer, the secondary writer, well, ha, tertiary writer, I mean, come on. Garen, fight first. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like this first episode. It's good to see them on a bike almost immediately. Really? You like the first episode? I thought you said the first ten were just boring and bad. As in comparison to like some of the other ones that we end up getting. Fair enough. Yeah, the first episode's fine. It, the first ten episodes is sort of like, eh, the moment. But yeah, uh, Kenzaki ends up, you know, that's the name of the, our main writer. He works for a company called Ford, along with Garen. Oh, what is it called? Ford. Okay. Just yeah. like I was during the show. I'm kidding. You were a table? Yeah. Bored? I was bored. Moving on. That was a terrible joke. But, yeah. Jacob's uh, not here to do it, so... Also, for people who are asking, Jacob has gone back to school, so he'll, he'll, be, here. he'll be here when he can. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, this first episode is sort of a mess at the same time, because we end up getting... That Kenzaki ends up getting kicked out of his apartment because he's not there that often. <laughs> and then he ends up moving Hold in. On. Does he still, does he still pay rent? I don't know how it works in Japan. I was gonna say, why the fuck would they care? But apparently he was also behind on his rent at the same time. Okay, if he's behind on his rent, that's one thing. 
But he ends up moving in with the rock climber who ends up basically being there. He's a photographer named Kotaro who's doing like sort of an expose on the writers. There's got to be one person named Kotaro during the show. And he's not good. There's always got to be one Kotaro. (laughs) Just not good. (coughs) The only reason he's really even... Token Kotaro. The only reason he's even really important to the plot is because of the fact that he's related to some other things. Probably yeah. also named Kotaro. No. <laughs> but we end up going to basically a uh, cafe. Jakanda, I believe, is the name of it. Jakanda! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Andre the Black Nerd. Wakanda! <laughs> but, yeah. We uh, are nerds of many types. <laughs> there is a man staying, uh, staying with uh, his sister. Although it's really his sister-in-law. Because his brother died prior to the show actually starting. And that ends up tying into everything as well. Uh, but it ends up... The man staying there, Hajime, is also our third comrade writer, who we don't really end up getting to see until the second episode. Boo. But comrade Chalice, his first suit. Love it. I love it. It looks so different. It looks so different. And I love the way that they integrated the heart into it. I love the way they integrated the heart into it. I love how his belt has that slit in the middle to slide the cards on, which is just really awesome this is really cool yeah and i also we also will always love it when somebody gets um dual blades like become a bow or something yeah he's based on the brand magic so it makes sense yeah no uh but yeah uh in this first episode of horde insects are released at a board laboratory <laughs> at, like at the lab that they are causing chaos and killing most of the scientists the young woman who hirose who ends up being important to the plot she's also like their what's the lady's name from agito the police woman who was always there. You were asking me to remember names. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Okay. And I bring her up for a reason as well. Uh, but, and, you know, the lady from Kuga who was always translating things around. She's basically that for Kenzaki and Tachibana. But she believes that uh, she saw Tachibana controlling the undead that the bugs formed. Uh, formed, And she ends up telling that to Kenzaki basically after the entire laboratory is destroyed. Oh, right. Sad. And although he doesn't believe it at first, Kenzaki, that is, after Tachibana just looks at him, when Kenzaki's fighting against an undead, Kenzaki begins to actually, you know, question. Now, Kenzaki does end up seeing this undead, and he ends up seeing security footage of Tachibana kidnapping Chief Karo <gasps> Dun, dun, dun! Now, Hirose ends up establishing her equipment at Kodoro's house, and moves there to, you know, basically just keep watching over everything. Right. Uh, they get alerted by the undead tracker, which is basically just, you know, a program on the thing that ends up emitting a loud noise. It ends up, that noise ends up being hilarious one later episode, like near the end, because it just was not expected. Um, and Hajime basically can sense the undead. There's I a reason for that. And there's also... Mark, I guess we have to say it. I see dead people. Well, you're not wrong. Yep. Also, there's this little girl named Amine. I hated her. Hajime-san! 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 I hated her. She's like the worst thing about this show. This goes back to the fact that I don't really like kid actors, and she's one of those. Except the one in uh, Kira Angel. He's great! Koto's so good! Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) People have been asking on Twitter, so I thought I'd bring it up. Uh, But yeah, they were alerted by this that there's an undead attacking the observatory while Amine and her uh, schoolmates are at. Hajime goes over there and saves her, and Kenzaki ends up getting kind How of How many fired. times does she, does she see Hajime-san during this? <sighs> X. Solve for it. Now, Kenzaki ends up getting converted by the monster, but is quickly intercepted by Hajime, who seals the monster, and then just starts punching Hajime, Kenzaki in the face. That's basically their entire relationship at the beginning, and I will talk about their relationship because, really... There is one. There is a good one. And the way that this show ends, basically, is just the encapsulation of that. Yeah. No, that's episode one and two. Uh, and Hirose ends up finding out that on the computer there is a locked, basically a locked thing. And she ends up trying to crack the password to find Chief Karasuma, who has still, is still missing after being taken by Tachibana. Now she does end up doing this, and there's a hologram of Chief Karasuma that she ends up seeing that glitches out. Tachibana ends up consulting one of his old classmates, because we finally get to have some things with him, because his body is starting to reject the Garen suit. Yeah. Now, the suits are based on undead. The category ace that they use to transform is a sealed undead. That's the way they end up having to beat the monsters in the show. They can't kill them. They can't destroy them. They actually have to be sealed. 
and that ends up playing into a much later part later on. What judges realized, it's very similar to Decker Ranger. I don't know. Sometimes they should have killed them. Yeah, but you're I'm thinking just, of SVD. True, <laughs> but um, it is. But it's a similar situation where not that they can't, but they usually should not kill them, but seal them into essentially a card. And just, then they send them off to get it judged. Was a, not only that, it's just a coincidence because they were airing at the same time. Yeah. And that's why I bring that up. Now, uh, Tachibana goes off to seal an undead, but Kenzaki manages to seal it for himself after he joins the battle. Tachibana's body is fighting against himself. We end up getting some, like, glimpses into his mind of him, like, turning green and breaking down and everything after he screams. Uh, Kenzaki demands that Tachibana tell him what g symbol was and accuses him of unsealing the undead you know, all of them. Right. Which Tachibana ends up denying. Uh, Tachibana ends up telling that Kenzaki that repeated use of the rider system will cause his body to break down as his body is starting to do so. Kenzaki in episode four, there's a lot that ends up happening in this show because the show is once again, like most other early Heisei, very, very serialized. Yep. So it's just like everything leads into something else, which is a good thing. Because it actually could keep you interested and and, like, and give so, a story. Yeah, you know, and, heaven for freaking bid. I know, and it's a good story. So it's just like this is what I look for in these earlier common writers, and that's why I like them so much more than some of the other ones that we end up getting nowadays. Wizard, ghost. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, in episode in episode four, Kenzaki, while he doesn't really end up trusting Tachibana, he still ends up worrying about him, and which makes sense. Tachibana basically trained him to become Blade. Right. Uh, Hirose ends up going to a building where she finds Tachibana and Chief Karasuma. Tachibana tells her that Karasuma and his researchers were the ones that released the undead. And Hirose begins to question whether her father was one of the people who actually did this. Put that, put a pin in that right now because it does end up becoming a thing later. Uh, Hajime searches for the undead responsible for the melting photos in his room. That just ends up randomly happening too. There, he's like in his place inside the cafe all of a sudden, the photos just start melting. I would have moved down and burned that place to the ground. <laughs> but it's actually the cause of an undead. I would have moved down and burned that place to the ground. <laughs> now, after destroying the monster, Hajime Jesus. once again ends up punching Kenzaki in the face and they start fighting. This is them. Throughout like the first good part of this show, they just start fighting and that's basically it. And you're just like, okay. Now... When Hirose ends up going into that room uh, where Tachibana and Chi Karasuma was, Chi Karasuma's body just bursts into flames. <gasps> they actually end up using the same flame effect that they use from Fives. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Amine ends up going to with Kotaro and Kazaki to the Cave of Echoes and gets poisoned by an undead. Hajime finds out about the undead and goes to find an antibody, and Kenzaki basically ends up going to help him after stopping Tachibana from destroying the undead without being, you know, because they got to get the antibody from the zone. That's how... Right, science. right, right, right. So, but yeah, that's basically the entire thing of that episode. Tachibana is sort of a dick the first couple episodes, and it's really... Sort of a dick? Well, yeah. <laughs> now, Chalice ends up... Uh, getting the antibody, he seals the uh, centipede undead. And here's the things about the undead. They're matched to a suit of cards. Right. So each rider ends up having, you know, a set, like... Spades, clubs, hearts, diamonds. Yeah. They, and all the monsters that are going up to there, because 2 through 10 don't have personalities, they're just monsters. Everything about that, though, totally different story. Uh, yeah. But he ends up sealing the centipede undead, which is a heart's... One. I love that though. The, what, the que- I always ask, my first question when we first started watching the show back in college is ace high or low? That's actually a great question. Because if it's low, then it technically shouldn't have. A... Like, are they playing a game of spades or are they playing a game of parts? Or is it both? Is it either or? That's the double joke here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Kenzaki then as Aikawa Fish Chalice. He admits nothing, and he tells him that he, if he ends up getting any closer, he'll beat him half to death. And he gives him the weirdest smile, because it's just like, if you if, if you say anything, I'll kill you. And then he goes... <laughs> like, he's just imagining it. It's just like, uh, okay, that's in episode six, by the way. Also, think about this episode. Mm-hmm. It aired on a leak day, February 
February 29th. Oh. It's the only other one to do that, besides uh, one episode in Skyrider. So, that's cool. Trivia. So that's your Tokugash trivia fact of the day. Yeah. Now, Kenzaki and Shirai, uh, which is Kotaro, return home. We haven't talked about their house, by the way. Nice house. Yeah. It is very big in the middle of this field, and I'm sitting here like, that's cool. I mean, it looks like sort of something out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it looks cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, they find that Hirose has left she because she left and apologized because she thinks that her father released the undead, and she ends up feeling super guilty about that. Tachibana has been staying at his old friend, Saigos, who's the doctor that he went to go see, uh, to find out what is wrong with him. Oh. And Karasuma finds her and tells her that Tachibana's problem is basically only psychological. Mm. Now, after Tach- uh, after Kenzaki and Kotaro end up finding Hirose, they are attacked and Kenzaki is kidnapped. <gasps> That's sort of an underlying running theme in this one. You don't say. This is not the belt from Fies. Yeah. Now, Kenzaki is taken to a facility where he is studied and forced to fight an undead. And Tachibana encounters a mysterious undead named Yusaka. This is the first one of the face card category that we end up getting to see. Because the face cards actually have, like, human forms and they have personalities. And you know what's the weird thing about this? Some of them I really like. And there's two of them in particular that end up coming up later. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, yeah, some of them I really, really do like. And I'm sort of upset they had to be sealed. It's, It's a weird thing because, yeah, they're... You know, there's the whole thing of the battle fights, which is basically a, a battle royale for the undead. Which, to be fair, the face cards are going to end up being the ones to win anyway. Exactly. But, yeah, the, some of them I just really, really end up liking. And Isak is the first one that we end up getting to meet. He is the Jack of Diamonds. Uh, now, Tachibana uh, later meets up with Hirose and Kotaro and goes to find Kinzaki. Aikawa finds Isaka. And follows him to where Kenzaki is. Why did you say it like that? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, Aikawa is Hashime. Uh, After watching Blade fight, he joins the fight against Blade. uh, And Garen shows up to actually try to help uh, Blade out. But is overcome by the Trilobite undead. And that's when we get that scene of (laughs) Uwa. (laughs) Uwa! Jesus Christ. This show was the first one full of me. (laughs) <laughs> and most of it comes from him. It's great. Uh, but let's see. Uh, episode 8, The Revived People. Uh, Karasuma, Chia Karasuma, shows up to sh- uh, assist the riders with the distractions. Blade ends up ser- saving Garen, seal the undead. Chala stops the fighting to give, you know, the Kuriha fan- Kurihara, which is Amine, her mother, uh, help to... Well, he goes off to help them because Isaka, being the giant jack ass, ass that he is, uh, basically ends up leaving. He thought my joke was bad. <laughs> basically ends up going and having one of his people leave a bomb at the restaurant that they're at, or well, that they operate out of. Uh, no, Chalice does end up getting there before they can actually blow up. I love how he ends up throwing it outside. The bomb blows up and it blows out all the windows, and the police actually respond. <laughs> it's been a while since we've had a police presence because in this one the writers are more the police than anything else uh, but yeah <laughs> now after being able to overcome his fears his psychological fears Tachibana decides to try and live a normal life that goes all about one day uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the the point is he tried and failed and Kinzaki and Hajime end up fighting again are things they do <laughs> in the first couple of episodes. Now, the zebra undead, you know, this is something I was thinking about. I sort of miss the older monsters in these shows, in, like in the earlier Heisei, because they just kill indiscriminately. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> Especially in some cases like Forze, where they terrorize people, uh, but they don't end up killing anybody. It's like, yeah, it's sort of morbid, but I sort of miss when the monsters were monsters who didn't really have much of a personality, or they did and they were just evil people. I, I sort of miss that. 
it, it was fun seeing that in play where it's just like a monster would come out of nowhere, eat people, and then leave. But yeah, uh, Tachibana, like I said, that lasted all of a day, decides to go ahead and fight again. And he and his girlfriend, Sayoko, they go out, uh, and this is when she actually was finding out that he is Garen. Blaze stops fighting with Chalice to assist Garen, but the undead ends up leaving. Uh, after leaving the Kurohara family, Haji, because Haji maybe just like, if I stay around you, you'll be in danger. Let me leave, and then he does. Then he meets a, pure, a poor mu musician who wants to end up building a boat because his father is the head of some big music company, and he doesn't want to end up following in his father's footsteps. Unfortunately, in the next episode, that boat is getting blown up, and then he, uh, Jin ends up blaming the musician does, blaming Hajime for basically everything. Because, to be fair, the only reason that boat got blown up in the first place is because Hajime was there and an undead found him. Yeah. Now, Garen is later kidnapped in episode 7, by Isaka, the peacock undead. I say it that way because his undead type is actually a thing later on. Uh, now, <laughs> basically what he ends up doing is putting Garen into like some tub with some plants that have like mild hallucinogenic properties. And he like gets him over his fear. I put that in hard quotations because that's basically bullshit at the end of the day. <laughs> but yeah, it's just... The first couple episodes are basically just, you know, having the whole day with Bored and Isaka and uh, Tajibana sort of being a traitor and Hajime later getting thrown off of a cliff because still a writer. But, <laughs> you know, someone's going to get thrown off of something. Plus, sign, I don't think anybody get thrown into a lake this time because the writer is not the writer from Spice. And or Agito. <laughs> and or Jetman. But, but yeah, uh, Isaka ends up offering the thing that he offered that he get well gave to Tachibana to Kenzaki. Kenzaki's like, no, get that shit out of here. Um, and then Isaka calls Garen to come and fight against Blade. Uh, now Garen arrives to fight Blade and overpowers him. Uh, until someone ends up intervening, Aikawa ends up hunting down the Jaguar undead. And there is a new ace in this episode, the spider undead. You know, we didn't talk about this. I like the designs of the monsters. Some of them are really cool, and I really like the spiders. Yeah, some of them are really cool. I love the mon The designs in this show overall are good. I just think their choice of colors in terms of some of their characters is what kind of killed it for me. I just don't like gray as a primary color. Now, Blade anyway. ends up rushing to help Garen fight against the category I use. Though, because the I will are admit, the, uh, the, there is kind of a fetish in the show of giant claw fingers. Yeah, that's from a lot of them. Like a lot of the monsters. But yeah, uh, Blade and Garen attempt to seal the category A's again, but it proves too much for both of them. <laughs> it's a sad thing, but it's just like, you know, the aces are really powerful. I mean, they're the ones who actually help the writer system so they're, transform. So they're not low, they're high. They're high in some cases, because <laughs> later on, the kings end up being high over them. And then the movie happens, but we'll get there. Whoa, we'll talk about that. It's that fucking bullshit of a movie. <laughs> Uh, Rant, okay. Blade and Garen fight over basically who will steal the category of uh, Ace. And then in this case, because it can. It ends up leaving these little spiders behind, though. And I was not okay with that at all. And those spiders show up a couple of times later on, and I'm just like, they're just running off of people. And I'm just like... Favorite part of the show. Oh, this is, this is wonderful. This is my favorite part of the show. Fucking hated it. Can't wait till we get to Garo. Now, this is the first time that Garen and Chalice really end up fighting each other mm. uh, in this episode. And this is the episode that uh, Isaka ends up arriving to help Garen, and they end up sealing, sending Chalice over a cliff. And Please. one of the undeads, the lion inde undead in this episode, uh, ends up appearing and saves a young boy named Mutsuki from being abducted. He ends up saving a boy named Mutsuki. We'll talk about him more in a second, uh, because of something that has to do with his actual suit actor who's playing his suit. Hmm. It's not a good thing. <laughs> now, in episode 14, they actually end up unsealing this ace. In the next couple of episodes, are basically Isaka and Karasuma, who's more or less unwittingly following him, uh, trying to find an actual carrier for the ace suit. And there's a new uh, 
uh, Henshin device as well, where it's different from Blade mm-hmm. and Garen's, where they end up having, you know, the turn up one. This one is just, like, actually opening up. Yeah. And I like this one. It's different from the others, and they use it as the basis for the other ones in, uh, for the ones in the movie. Oh, yeah. And it says open up instead of turn up, which I like. It, it's cool. Uh, now, Garen ends up having the actual ace card. Isaka comes in and beats him up because Garen won't give it to him. Uh, and the Kirihara family has been kidnapped by the dragonfly undead. Sad face, I guess. I don't mind the mother. I just hate the kid. And she's yeah. terrible. <laughs> oh, she's so bad. Now, in the prior episode, Isaka killed Sayako, Garen's girlfriend. And Garen does end up getting uh, revenge on him in episode 15 and actually ends up beating him and he ends up stealing the peacock and the dead. But they do end up having uh, someone, basically Mutsuki ends up being the only one compatible enough to wear the Lane Gold suit. Let's talk about that suit. I love that suit. That is a great suit. Yeah, The green is. and the gold works together so perfectly. <laughs> Those are very good colors. Because you know why? It's not gray. Uh, it's silver, by the way. But yeah. Sure it is. But yeah, I love, like, I don't even know what it is about this. I think it's because the helmet is so different. And this is the first one that's been based on a spider. This is the first rider that's been yeah. based on a spider. And it looks just so good in the way that, you know, the suit actually And works the way that they better. integrated the actual um, suit, the clover, into it is also very well done. Yes, he is the suit of clubs. Uh, but let's talk about his suit after and what Mutsuki actually looks like. Mutsuki is sort of thin. His suit after is sort of bulky. Yeah. And I'm just like... No. Nah. Well, you gotta be bulky to, you know, be a suit actor. To no, but at least there's, like, some similarities between, like, Kenzaki and uh, uh, the guy who does most of the Comrider suits who was in Ghost. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's just like, there's, you know, some notification on that. But between these two... It just looks so weird because of the fact that you're going from someone so thin to someone who's actually a lot taller than him. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And this this also happened in Go Busters, where blue and yellow, you you know how tall they are. Yeah. They're about the same height after he transforms. And it's just it's not like, as bad as Sun Vulcan. Yeah, where he grew about five feet. No, <laughs> blue shrunk. Oh, yeah. Five feet. It's just sort of weird, and I really wish they would do better in picking the suit actors. Like, yeah, the suit actor does great as the angle, which is an evil suit, by the way. The category ace was not fully sealed away, so it's basically taking over Mutsuki slowly. But yeah, it's just like, for something like this, I had to bring it up just because of the fact that it's such a stark difference. It's even worse in the second opening, where they end up, uh, like, showing them standing on a cliff, and Mutsuki basically just grows (laughs) after they transform. (laughs) Also... Mutsuki's actually in the beginning, like, the first opening. He's in there from episode one, but you never see his face because he's always been hidden by a hat. Hmm. They just, this is, like, the first time they actually get to see him uh, in the show itself. And I think that's interesting. It's good to have little Easter eggs in your own show to preview something, but don't actually bring it up until later. Now, Liangle also ends up having this one card called Remote, which is bullshit because it can unseal... The sealed undead. And I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end. Because it's bullshit. <laughs> that card and the fact that after he, you know, gets control of the Yangle suit again, it's never used. Now, uh, they finally end up figuring out that it's Musuki who is wearing the Yangle suit. And over the next couple of episodes, Musuki's personality starts to really shift to more towards, you know, I need to get stronger to actually beat everything. And this is just a children's card game. Let me go ahead and collect all the cards. That's basically his entire shtick. For a good amount of time. Yeah. How's that go for him? It doesn't. He ends up getting taken over basically by the category ace. <laughs> uh, now, there is also another man called Kiryu, who was apparently the person who was supposed to be Garen prior to Tachibana being Garen. Oh. He didn't have the complete fusion capability. He's been going around, like, killing criminals. He ends up killing some guy who, who kidnapped a kid and some other criminal as well. Because he lost his hand the first time he was going to transform into Garen. He was going to run through the turn-up thing, and then his hand just got caught between him and the actual turn-up, and just burned it all off. 
Awkward. Ew. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, now, Liangle ends up fighting Blade, but Kiryu ends up coming in and actually takes Liangle's belt and wears that for next four, about one or two episodes. Yeah. Uh, because the Category A's felt he was much better at, you know, actually fighting. Which makes sense. Musiki was just a high school basketball player. What else the hell do you expect? To uh, go Kobe in the fourth quarter. Basically. But <laughs> basically, category is what you're canceled. Just like in humans before the show actually ends up starting. Damn. <laughs> there yeah, it is. That show got canceled before the show ends up starting. Because everybody was like... No one cares. N- no, it was just like, this is bad. <laughs> it got canceled because it was bad, not because no one cared. Uh, now, Kiryu ends up beating up Chalice as the angle, tells Tachibana to fight. Tachibana's like, how about no? And he ends up trying that for a little bit. Doesn't work. Uh, now, Kiryu ends up lo- losing control of the Liangle suit after he ends up getting beaten for the first time. Because I feel like the category ace is like, I can actually work with something with Mutsuki. Um, Kiryu was just at his plateau. Yeah. So... All the uh, cards that he used to remote after the category is coming off of him. Um, all those cards and the undead that he's now controlling, because that's what remote does, they go and just brutally maul Kiryu to death. Fun times. And Mitsuki ends up getting the angle back. <laughs> yeah, this is a children's show. Sure, it's the early 2000s children's show. Well, I guess it's been 2000s at this point. Um, it's a family picture. It's a family picture. Bring the kitties. Uh, now, two new high-class undead end up showing up within these episodes with a plot to take out Kenzaki, which makes sense. He's sort of like the biggest threat at the moment with, you know, actually being able to wear his suit, which is something that not everybody else can say in this show. Uh, now, Chalice, because one of the centipede undead got unsealed again. Chalice ends up sealing him again. And one of the undead, it's the orchid undead, which is a, she takes like the form of a woman who ends up like starting to date Kotaro for a little bit, but she's basically just like, I just want to kill him. And then she's like, oh, you're friends with Blade. Okay. I still want to kill you, but I want to kill him too. Yeah. And the orchid. This homicide just turned into a double homicide. Basically. That's basically her entire thing is just to come in and start killing people. And she's very backstabby. There's also police. Okay, they're gone. <laughs> uh, now, Tachibana has been training Mutsuki to just like, hey, you have to have the correct mind space to actually overcome the spider I'm dead. Like I did after, you know, I didn't for a little bit and I had to be put into a vat of plants. He was like, you could do better. What the fuck is this show? <laughs> Uh, just a lot. Uh, now the mole undead ends up coming out. Because there's always a mole. There always has to be a mole somewhere. And he ends up overwhelming Blade and uh, Garen. They end up fighting it again the next episode and they actually end up beating it. Well, Musuki ends up beating it. Because at this point, fighting is just foreplay to these people. It, oh, we'll get to that. Because <laughs> you're not far from the truth. I know I'm not. I watch the show. Uh, now, Blade ends up, uh, getting Hajime's uh, change card from the Eagle and Dead and seals him and gives it back to him. Uh, As you do. Now, in episode 22 and 23, there's this side character who ends up coming in, and it's the lady from Agito. <gasps> the policewoman is actually in this show, and that's cool. I like seeing returning actors come back. Now, is she a it's, returning actor or returning character? Returning actress. It's okay. just her, yeah. And it's Making sure. I, I say that more often for characters like this because we don't see that many women come back. yeah. Uh, that's because you don't see that many women period no it's not even that it's just like you actually don't end up getting to see the female characters come back or like the female actresses usually because unless you're hurricane blue and then you come back for everything yeah she just come back again she just had her second baby you're like come on jasmine likes to return always becca pink likes to return always (laughs) <laughs> There's just like the two of them are always there. And I love seeing them. It's good because this is just a side thing. Usually the female actresses, well, of course, the female actors end up uh, retiring earlier. The, now that you think about it, when returning actors and actresses happen, they've never really referenced. They do in some cases. They do in some cases, but not a lot. They did it in the... Uh, they 
blatantly did it in Kuro Yuji, and we all about died laughing. They blatantly did it in the um, Ryuki movie, where the cast of Agito came back. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I like a lot of the earlier ones because, and this also happens in the Missing Ace movie, too, where the past actors of the previous show will come back for the next thing. Mm -hmm. And I like that. It's just good to see them come back. Uh, Now, the next couple episodes, because it slows down a little bit. Especially when, uh, on that point, especially when not two weeks but prior, some, we say that one particular actor will never return, and then we get a picture of him back. With a costume change, just to say, fuck you, Tokacast. Yep. <laughs> Philip from W came back in the thing uh, for a magazine spread and some other stuff with uh, Ren, uh, who played... Uh, why am I blanking on Shotaro? Name? Shotaro, yes. There you go. Yeah. Just to say, fuck us. Yeah, they, they basically came back and were just like, this is so good, because we haven't seen them together in years. So it's just, it's always a good thing to see them back. Um, Had to get be salty about that. Continue. Now, the Wolf Undead is another Ooh. one of the higher level. Like I think he's another Jack. Oh. Uh, and the Elephant Undead as well. There's also uh, I think it's the Elephant Undead. Well, I'm probably wrong, but another one. Almost all of the Queen Undeads are all female except for Chalices. That's the only male Queen. Queen. It explains a lot about this show. <laughs> <laughs> so I like it so much. Black Fang is... I hate episodes that focus on bikes. And this is one of those because they're just making a new bike. And I'm just like, this doesn't really do much of anything for anything always. And it's not good. <laughs> it does so- It does something for one particular thing. Toys! I don't even think they sold this one because it's only in two episodes. They blow up the bike in the second episode. All right. I tried... And, yeah, but at this point, they basically have almost all of the Jacks and a couple of the Queens. So, in episode 26, we actually end up getting to see the debut of Blade's Jack form. Sorry, a couple of the Queens. Just out of context, sounds real bad. Anyway, Jack form, I like. Because, one, it takes away the gray, gray, and turns it to gold. No, Kiryu silver is silver. That is gray. But <laughs> anyway, turns into gold and gives wings and does a bit of a cosmetic change on yeah, his like the, sword. The, yeah, like extends blade swords and later on when Garen gets his, it actually makes his gun into sort of like a mini bayonet. Yeah, it gives him a bayonet. But I like the idea that it extends the sword. It does a good. It's a. It's simple enough where you absolutely know this is a mid mid season power up, and. The f- I like the the design of the wings primarily because I don't know I just think they really worked. Yeah, it really really does. Now there's another one in here. Um, in this episode, a strange man, Nogoroshima, ends up showing up to uh, Kodoro's house with news from Karasuma. Apparently, they worked together for board. And this man, Nogoroshima, is actually the tarantula undead. I like that by the way because usually we only end up getting like one spider. Or, like, a generic version of this, just a spider. I like the fact that we have, like, a uh, spider and a tarantula in this one. Because tarantula is much worse. Although he's, like, the nicest guy in the entire show. <laughs> so, it, I like that juxtaposition between the two. But, yeah. Shima's great, by the way. He also has the best character from Change Man's name. So, but, yeah. Shima is just a really, really good character. <laughs> and that's how he ends up bringing the thing to Roz Absorber. That he gives him to get him the blade to give him this jack form, and he tells Garen that, hey, Karasuma's is still working on yours, so you'll get yours soon. But Shima is the uh, king of hearts, uh, king of uh, clubs. Makes sense for this actual Spider Undead. Yep. Um, because in the next episode, Mitsuki ends up falling in under the control of the Spider Undead again. Uh, and Shima ends up so confronting. Shima-ish. Because here's how it works. It's like Liangel and Mutsuki are basically two separate entities. Liangel is the spider undead. Mutsuki is himself. Uh, and Shima ends up confronting him and just like, hey, stop. And Liangel's like, how about no? So- <laughs> <laughs> just like that. How about nah? Yeah, that's basically their entire thing. that. And like, Shima after a little bit is just like, the only way that I'll be able to help him is if he ends up sealing me. And Blade is like, no, you're too nice for this. Stop. <laughs> But yeah, I really, uh, it's, like I said, it's weird when I end up liking a character who's supposed to be a villain, but the Tarantula Undead and one of the other of this later on, just like, I like them a lot, so I don't want them to do anything, uh, like, with these characters. 
And in the next episode, Shima ends up allowing himself to be sealed to try to help him. And it doesn't do much now. It'll end up doing more later. Uh, now, Azumi, the serpent undead, ends up finding Hajime and actually uh, fights him with the help of the tortoise one. Um, and, oh, right, this lady. She has, like, the weirdest psychotic laugh the serpent undead does. <laughs> That's basically her the entire time she's on screen. She's so weird. In the next episode, because these two episodes with her are so strange because they basically work as filler episodes because it's like Hajime goes and loses his memory, but he doesn't lose his personality. And he ends up taking the place of some guy who looks exactly like him. It's so weird. It's so bad. And I don't like these two episodes. <laughs> episodes 29 and 30 are not that good. Uh, But yeah. And at the end of episode 30, this is when Garen ends up getting his jack form. And I like his a little bit more than Blades because Blades, his uh like his wings are straight and Garen's have like curves in them. And I, I like that a lot. Um We haven't talked about this, the card system. Like how they actually end up getting yeah. their final attacks and everything. I like that. I don't mind it. Um especially because it gives them a variety. I mean, but uh going off of cards if they're they're what they're the ace jack is a transformation king is a transformation queen is never really uses it that gives them 11 abilities yeah. per card essentially and counting the queen mm -hmm. which isn't bad because it's not they're not always final attacks or augments stuff like that i think it's really clever yeah it's usually like the only way they make their final attacks is when they combo yeah off of a card and i also <laughs> Love how the storing system. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to Ryuki. Damn it. Damn, Damn it. it. Damn, Damn it. it. <laughs> Got it. Okay. As, As to... the monster runs away. <laughs> and then there's Blade. Mm, that one. Yeah, I like I like it on Blades. I like it on... Um, Garen's. Garen's because it's on the back of his gun. Musuki and Chalice have theirs in their like, shoulder or like, side of Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> It's Part really of the cards, weird. motherfucker. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, I like um, both of their jack forms. Both of them look good, and, you know, that's always something you can sort of say. It's sort of sad, though, because, once again, there's another second church air writer Thank who you. ends up having something that is on par for a little bit, and then it just gets... He stops using it after a little while. Uh, now, they end up having another king in the next episode, the Caucasus Undead, which is Spade's king. Um... And this guy is a douche. He takes, like, the form of, like, some teenager. And he is such an asshole. And I, I just hate him. And then we end up getting introduced to tr uh, the Trial series. The first one is Trial D. Because um, you got to try out that D. <laughs> You're welcome. But yeah, the Trial series are being made by Hirose's father. I'm gonna put that in real quotes. Yeah, that's that's some serious quotes. <laughs> but yeah, he's being made by them to basically stop Kenzaki because Hirose's father is just like, if I don't end up stopping him, something really bad will end up happening. And we end up finding out that Hajime is actually number 53 in the card series, The Joker Undead. Yep. And I like the way the show does it so much better than the movie and the way that they end up explaining this. Sort of. <laughs> but yeah, um,. Ha uh, Hajime ends up transforming into a Joker form for the first time. Uh, he basically ends up uh, just running away because King ends up ca the King uh, Caucasus Undead ends up capturing Aikawa, ends up taking his cards, and ends up transforming into his Joker form and leaving. And the only way that Aikawa, oh, sorry, Hajime could transform back into his human form is the Two of Hearts card, the Human Undead, which is apparently the previous winner of the previous battle fight from 10,000 years ago. Um, and Hajime ends up helping Blade seal the Scarab Undead while King flees. Uh, because the Scarab Undead was a basket of dicks because it could freeze time. So <laughs> a basket of dicks. Yep. Uh, Dick basket. Now, Kenzaki is defeated and later ambushed by Trial D. And, you know, these are things that the trials just end up coming out of nowhere, and the way they can't really be destroyed by no means, and they can't be sealed because they're not undead. Uh, now, 
But they do end up actually being in the Caucasus Undead in episode 34. And this is when we get introduced to Blade's final form, King. I love this form. It looks so good. I love the use of the gold in the navy. It just looks really, really good as a form by itself. It does. It, it is a great looking form that just screams... Royalty. Ro- not, not only that, but screams final form. This... The design, the colors, the bl- the navy blue, the gold, and the giant ass sword that he gets. It's such a good form. It is a great form. King is one of those up there forms. But it form. does have a drawback. Yes, because Far-wise. as soon as he gets this form, the end game of this show starts. I love that. They really didn't do that because I feel like with Kuga, they did it at the very beginning, but they did it like sort of the opposite the way that Blade did. Because we have about, what is this, episode 34? We have 15 episodes left before the actual end of the show. Yeah. And it's just like, as soon as he gets king form, it's just like, that's when the show is just like, end game from here on out. Pretty much. And well, not, Because now that he has this form, he's got a time limit. Yeah. Well, not so much a time limit, but... A use limit. Yeah, a use limit. That's basically what it is. Um, I feel like the way they did it in Kuga is just like, he doesn't get it to the very end, and he feels like he might lose control, but Yusuke keeps it in control, you know, can't, he ain't in control. So, <laughs> But in this case, just like the more Kenzaki ends up using this form, the more that later on they end up figuring out that he's transforming slowly into an undead. So it's just like... Specifically a joker. Yeah, specifically another joker. And when he transforms... Because there must be two. There's always two jokers. Well, he's in deck of the cards, yeah. No, I'm just saying. That's kind of the, that's kind of the thing they're going for. The two jokers. Four yeah. queens. Four kings. That's a bit... Yeah, it's just like, it really works in this show because basically as soon as he transforms into King, Hajime starts losing control of his Joker form. Uh-oh. Yeah. So as soon as that happens, you're just like, well, we're fucked. <laughs> well, fuck. And like, for the next couple of episodes, it's basically just them figuring out that the more that he use it, uses it, the more that things just start going out of control. And the angle ends up having I call, uh, Hajime's cards. Uh, and he basically uses the remote on the chalice card. <laughs> Uh, trying to fight against Joker, and that doesn't work because the Leang- angle ends up getting his ass beat, and he ends up getting all of his cards back in the next couple episodes. That's basically just him in a nutshell. Mutsuki is always just going to end up getting a crazy around. nutshell. He's like the most powerful of the aces, but once they end up getting those other forms, he just takes a step back, which is sort of sad because there is an SIC like toy figure of his Jack form, and I like it. It gives him like a giant mace with clubs on it and everything. Ooh. It looks cool. Also, uh, King Form just basically just walks through the trials. Yeah. Like, literally just obliterates them. I love his finisher, Royal uh, Straight Flush, and the other finishers that he ends up getting. Uh, or um, Yeah, it's just like, it's all really, really good. I love, like, this whole thing. Episode 37, we end up getting introduced to Wild Chalice, which is Chalice's King Form. Which looks amazing. And this is also when he ends up getting his... uh. Um, like, everything back together. Like, he can actually control the Joker form again. But yeah, let's talk about Wild Chalice. Woo, I love this one. The crimson red, the gold, the black, and then the specks of green in the visor and the chest. Make this a great contrast of colors, a very intimidating look. Not to mention his two blades have holsters on each of his legs. Yeah. Where they are much thinner now, to the point where they almost look like he or just he's just drawing guns. Just well, sh- they look just like praying mantis. Like, no, no, absolutely. That's so cool. And then he can still make a bow, or he still gets a bow. Yeah, and that bow is just like I'm going to destroy everything. I'm going to no. It looks like he's going to impale them on it first, and then just stab them, and then shoot. Yeah. It's just, everything. It, it looks menacing, and god damn it, does it look awesome. Now, in episode 38, Kensaki ends again kidnapped again, this time by Hirose, uh, the father, and basically sends him out to try to fight against Liango. Now, he ends up transforming into king form because Hirose basically poisons him, transforms him into king's form, and this is basically what ends up happening. Like, they show. Oh, shit. Yeah. They show specifically what happens the more he ends up transforming into King Form. He starts to lose control. He starts to just, like, fight people. And this is also when Liango gets his neck chopped. So- <laughs> Which was, without a doubt, 
one of our favorite moments in this show. This it's he turned our favorite moments just in Kamen Rider in general. He <laughs> he transforms into Wild Chalice. The angle runs up. He's like, "I'm gonna help." And Wild Chalice, no, he's just like, "I'm gonna fight him." And Le- <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> not even looking at him, chops him in the neck, <laughs> and the angle goes down. It's one of my favorite scenes of Kamen Rider, just like in general. We we <laughs> played that over and over. It was so unexpected, but so hilarious. It, like the absolute chop of that neck, it was just and it wasn't just it wasn't a chop. It was a eh. <laughs> like a but there was a flourish to it. Just <laughs> no, now there's been some things going on between Hajime and um, and Kenzaki. Like, ah. They become friends for a good while now. After the first time that he ends up saving Hajime after he was thrown off of a cliff. Why would you put it like that? Because it's true, and it base it's. It leads up to the what is basically the rest of this show. Like you can't deny that. No. Like their relationship is what builds on the rest of this show. And I say relationship is yeah, but it's <laughs> just a true statement. Um, I love how I just cut you off. <laughs> I wasn't ready. But yeah, because like when Kenzaki is still going wild and everything, and he transforms the wild child, and I kind of just like you can't attack me. And Kenzaki just comes over there and just stops the blade right above his head. And I'm sitting here, and Hajime just like, yep. You want that D. <laughs> you want that trial D. <laughs> Don't act like you won't make another joke, everybody. We know it's true. I know he was, because he, you know, hangs out with me. So <laughs> At this point, it's no longer my choice. It's true. All but... because of you people. <laughs> I have to deal with him because of you people. Uh, you dealt with me before. You'll deal with me after. But yeah, um, in like in the next couple episodes, it's Hiroshi finally meeting her father. We end up finding out that her father was actually killed uh, once he unleashed the undead, trying to save Hiroshi's mother, his wife, uh, after she ends up dying. He thinks that the undead have the wah, means wah. to eternal life. But he ends up dying, and he ends up transferring like his thoughts and his memories and everything over to Trial B, which is one of the... I don't, they never mentioned Trial A, by the way. Just want to bring that up. <laughs> trial A was a failure. It was a legit trial. But, it's... but yeah, it's just... Uh, and there's this whole thing where he ends up kidnapping Mutsuki. Uh, and in episode 40, he ends up being killed by the other trial that he made. Because the trials are basically based on the writers. Like, uh, trial D is based on Blade. Trial G is based on Garen. And it's trial... <laughs> Where's trial no, it's trial D... Yeah, it, uh, trial F is based on Gary and Trial G is based on uh, Lee Angle. Trial D. <laughs> and there's also another undead. It's uh, the Queen of Clubs for Mutsuki. I like her. She's not as, nearly as nice as uh, Shima-san, but I like her quite a bit. She was always you know, out there doing stuff and showing exactly what the battle fight means, but this battle fight wasn't made by the god of the battle fight, which is basically speaks through a tablet that they end up having uh, that the head of board does. Tenoji, I believe his name was. Um, but I, I love this whole series of episodes. Like, the end game is so good because where it starts, just it just leads up to everything for the next couple episodes. Mm-hmm. Because in the last, uh, they end up meeting the king of uh, diamonds, uh, the giraffe undead, he was really, really strong in himself. And they... He is sort of weird. I hate the fact that he came in so late because I get the feeling that I would like this character a lot. Yeah. He was like, he, he hung around the writers. He wasn't like completely and utterly evil, per se. Uh-huh. Uh, like, yeah, he didn't do the Mandark laugh, but. <laughs> 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 but he did have glasses. <laughs> but he, uh, he ends up saving Mutsuki after Mutsuki ended up helping him. But, then, but he's just like, the only way that I can see that this working, that this battle fight went up ending because the Joker can't be the last one alive. It may seem that either have to be that another card is declared a winner, or there have to be two undead at the end for the battle fight just basically going pause uh, for an indefinite amount of time because the undead can are undead it can last forever. Ha ha ha. But yeah, uh, the tiger undead, the queen of uh, the queen of clubs, mm-hmm. basically ends up hanging around Musuki a lot because Musuki has gone all super edgy. And his girlfriend, who he's, he's been around since the beginning of the series, is like always trying to get him back. But she's I've gone edgy. Now. Basically, he wears a hat. <laughs> Hacks automatically means it, it's, it's a fedora. So it's, 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 all right, all right. Now you have a point there. That's all right. You have a point there. And Tenoji, the head of board, 
uh, has these other two cars that he ends up combining into one thing called the Titan. And the Titan is basically just full of bullshit because it can turn, it's two undead put together. It can turn into other people and it can poison the riders to basically start to become undead themselves. Um, and in episode 42, Lee Engel ends up getting uh, Garen's rise, rouse absorber, which is, you know, the thing they use to transform the Jack and King form. Right. Uh, the Queen of Clubs is given it by Garen because he feels that he can trust her enough to actually help Mutsuki because that's the thing that she really wants to do. Right. And so she goes and does that. She ends up being defeated by um, Lee Engel. Uh, he ends up using the rouse absorber. They go basically inside of his mind. Uh, we end up seeing Shima and the Queen, uh, the Jaguar undead. Oh, sorry, the Tiger undead. And they end up, one, defeating Titan in this episode. And Liangle ends up, you know, the category is finally actually sealed. And Mutsuki ends up getting full power. Well, I guess getting full control of his body and his thoughts and everything. Right. This is the episode where Mutsuki actually starts to become a thing. I like this episode, though, because it's basically Mutsuki fighting as the... Tarantula undead. He's using that card to fight because he can't fight his Category 8s. Right. So he's fighting as a Tarantula undead, and there's all these like cool cuts between him fighting the Category 8s and the Tarantula undead fighting the Category 8s. It's all really quick, uh, cool to see. And the Titan undead ends up getting destroyed in the next couple episodes. And I, I, I love, because it's only in the last couple episodes that we get to see all four of the writers fight together. True. And it's cool to see them like that. <laughs> like It's something that didn't happen in the show before. And it's just a good thing to see. I really, really like how they end up tricking the Titan Undead. And it's just great. Now, in episode 45, there's a fifth ace card called Carabaros, which basically ends up being the um, one from Missing Ace. This is the card they use to right. transform the Blade, the Ark, and the um, Lance. Right. Uh, episode, uh, the last of episodes, uh, they end up beating uh, Carabaros as he as he ends up taking uh, some of the cards. They end up getting it back. They beat him. Uh, he ends up being the card itself ends up being thrown into the tablet of which the gods speak through. And Tenoji basically ends up becoming Carabaros Part Two. He ends up fighting the giraffe undead. Giraffe is undead. It's like fuck. I'm out of here. So he ends up leaving. Garen and the others end up finding him and they go to help him um, bring him back. And in the next episode, it's Garen and his king um, fighting his. The giraffe undead. They end up going off of a cliff, and they end up uh, finding basically nothing because Garen's rouse absorber has been broken. Uh, but and this is basically the last one that we end up seeing for episode forty-seven. Uh, That's the last time that we really end up getting to see Garen. Now there are no more undead left, and because of that, only Joker is left, and the guys don't want that. Right. So what they end up doing is basically releasing all these. Oh my God! I'm just this thing about these things make me angry. They, like, it ends up releasing dark roaches, which are basically just like mass produced undead. I only say that I fucking hate them because them and the dragonfly things from the end of Ryuki, fighting those things in Genesis is fucking awful because they're flyers. And I'm just like, could you stop? And they don't. And I get so tired of them. And they jump and they. Duh. Ugh. <laughs> but, yeah, episode 49. Now, here's the thing we were sort of building up to. Because of the relationship between Hajime and Kenzaki. Kenzaki is like, okay, I'm going to keep using King Form against these Dark Roaches, although I really don't need to, because he's powerful enough in his, you know, regular blade form to beat them. But he ends up constantly using it, and this ends up leading up to, as we said earlier, the more that he uses it, the more that he turns into an undead. And then he keeps using it, and he keeps using it, and then he and um, Hajime end up fighting with Hajime basically just going insane a little bit because he can't keep his Joker form under control anymore. And he does so, and... They end up transforming, and Kenzaki's blood turns green. Kenzaki turns into an undead, and the only reason he did that is basically to save Hajime, because if he doesn't do that, one, the world ends up being destroyed, and two, he did not want to kill Hajime. That's, like, his thing. Yeah. And I love the ending of Blade. The ending of Blade is so good. <laughs> like it's, Even I can't deny that. It's yeah. so weird to see, like, self-sacrifice. Like, yeah, they sort of did this in Gaim, but not to this extent. No. So it's just like, in the guy, and it was them fighting over the gold now by the end of it. It's just like, with this, Kenzaki was doing this out of his own volition to actually turn into the undead. And I'm just like, that's something you never end up seeing, you know? Something to basically just, I'm not going to say martyr yourself, but basically offer yourself up as an offering. 
yeah. to become this thing. And that's why I love Blade so much is because of the end of the show. It's it's great. <laughs> Blade is such a good show. Yeah, that's the end of uh, the show. The second, uh, we forgot to talk about this because this happened in episode 30. The second opening. This is the one sung by Ryder Chips. I like this one a lot more. Uh, this is also where the lead singer Ricky comes from. Like he was a like a featured artist for oh. him. And then he be, got hired on for Ryder Chips after it. Um, I like them both though. Now let's go ahead and talk about these characters. Ken Zaki. Not the worst main character. He's definitely know. not the worst. Not at all. I like him. But like he's really, really positive and everything. And it was He is a bit over optimistic. In or, some cases, yeah. In some cases he's also a bit Especially at the beginning. At the beginning he's a bit over optimistic. He's a bit too trusting of some people. Like honestly, if I was dealing with what he was dealing with at the beginning with Garen, I would have said fuck him. <laughs> so much faster. Yeah, it's just like it's sort of insane. He ends. Uh, I think he's becoming the blue Joker at the end of it, and it's good to see him because he comes Joker. back. Joker. Yeah, he ends up coming back like the second most after thighs in terms of like the well, third most after decade and thighs. Uh, what just, about Geno? Well, he never. His actor never comes back. No, that's right. Because he, all... he went to go do actual movies. Good, good movies. <laughs> I had that idea. Anyway, um, to do Kenshin later for the uh, for the thing we were talking about. Yeah, we're gonna do those movies. But it's good to see him come back because he just came back last year for the Go Rider thing with X Aid. Oh yeah, it was good to see. He looks the exact same. I need to watch that. It's good. It's really good to see Baron and another it's, it's, it's just weird to hear that the mo- a movie with the Pac Man as the villain is good. No, you're thinking about the Ghost X8 one. This oh. is the Go Rider special that led up to the shitty superhero Tyson, but the Go Rider thing was actually good. Oh. <laughs> it, it's just good to see him back and looking the exact damn same. So just, what the fuck is it with you and the, the Japanese people and just refusing to age? You. Gat is a vampire, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good to see him come back. And, you know, I really like, you know, his self sacrifice, and it really leads. Because him at the end of Blade leads to basically the entire Go Rider thing with him. Because, you know, everybody in that show is basically dead, mm-hmm. except for uh, uh, Emma, and he's technically dead. Yeah. So it's it's just a good thing to have. Uh, Tachibana. It's, like, it was so weird. Uh, this is just another thing. It's so weird because I watched Forze before this, and he's one of the main villains in Forze. <laughs> and they actually referenced that in, like, one of the net movies. For I think it was the first superhero Tyson, where they uh like he was about to transform back into Garen and somebody interrupted him. <laughs> but yeah, Tachibana was a thing. He was sort of a mess and an ass, a mess. Yeah, he he was sort of terrible throughout this entire show. But he got better after like the first two episodes. This is why I don't really like the first two episodes because his whole story arc is eh. a mess. Yeah. But after that, he's just like he's really dependable when he's not always betraying Kenzaki. Like the other time he did that with Hirose's father, I'm just like, Ugh. why do you, why do you still trust this guy? He's really dependable when he's not trying to kill me. Yeah. Other than that, he's fine. What? He also appeared in a, a superhero Tyson GP. Cool. He's in that. It's good to see him back. His wife is in a couple of things too. Hajime. He was sort of the Edge character before the Edge happened with Mutsugi. <laughs> I had more hair. But I mean, he's like, sort of like, I don't the, really like humans. Except for these humans, because I saw their father die. <laughs> he's kind of the anti-hero. Yeah, but at the end, he's like, like, after he gets his own wealth for me, he's become like, really calm and sort of Tai Chi-esque and throughout the entire thing. Be um, like Wata. Basically, that's him. He's like, really nice, and him and uh, Kenzaki and their relationship... <laughs> it's true are we We're, done yet no because we still got one character left I'm just I'm so tired of your fantasies it's not even a fantasy like they push it in this show I know, what, no, I'm not saying they don't but you're the one who's pushing it over the edge with your fantasies I don't know that there is an edge in this show <laughs> oh wait here it is it's Mutsuki uh, <laughs> you walked right into that <laughs> The master of segways. The yeah, Mutsuki. Him as the category ace. He's kind of a bitch. 
Yeah, he's just like, I want to be stronger the entire time. And that's really just the category it's like, overwhelming. Oh, that, they're just, uh, there's so many characters in Commodore that can just be described by that one word. Edge. No, bitch. Yeah. But it's just like him, and then he just, got, he gets jobbed really hard later on. Like, yeah, he is legitimately His heart is a karate chop throat. Yeah. Like, he's legitimately the most powerful out of the aces. But since he never gets a power up for him, he's sort of stuck as where he is. To be fair, that's still fairly powerful. And he has the second best two out of the show. So. But yeah. In my opinion, that's not saying much. But moving on. It is for me, because I like all of them. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the end of the show. I like, I love Blade. It's a really Even on the movie. second viewing? Yeah, even on the second viewing, it's like, usually there's something I'll end up getting more annoyed by, but I was just annoyed by Amine as I was the first time. And... But yeah, it's just like I love how this story legitimately never stops. I love how early the end game is up starting. I love the ending. It's and I like the characters. So I like the characters. I like the plot. I definitely love the whole idea of self sacrifice. My biggest complaint is the one I had at the beginning of this review is the suits, and because that's the thing that you look at the most in a show like this, that makes it hard to enjoy. I thought it was very well written. I thought it was very well acted, but I did not think it was very fun, which is a big thing for me. And that is my opinion. Shitty opinion inside. Tell us what you think of Blade in the comments below. I'm very excited to hear what people think about it because we did put out that survey and Blade was pretty up there. Was it? Yeah. Okay. And we will be doing a video for that very soon. Thank you so much for the amount of votes that we got. Unfortunately, Survey Monkey is an asshole. Yes! And would only allow us to view a hundred of the, the first 100 votes out of the three times that we got unless we paid money, which we don't have. However... We have been discussing this, and we want to make an announcement slash kind of a feeler to see if y'all are interested in this. We are thinking about starting a Patreon. Where, and if you're not aware what that is, it's essentially this, but you have to pay for it. The difference is we will be still doing this. We'll still be uploading to YouTube, but we will be also be uploading specific content to whoever follows us on our Patreon. Maybe things like the Rurouni Kenshin live-action movie reviews. We are thinking about Jacob and I doing anime shows where we talk about anything that's related to tokusatsu and anime or just anime in general because we want to reach out to that already that audience so if you're interested in a patreon let us know on the comments follow us on twitter to let us know there and also once again if you want to join my destiny clan for tokucast on the xbox please let me know and that uh, one guy who said that he had this for your console we will have words later bye everybody what <laughs> fuck you uh join us next time oh yeah as we do the Ultraman Zero movies, Jake and I will be doing those. So, yeah, it's, that'll be a short one, but it's a great lead in because we can watch those quickly and get on to Decker Ranger Month. I can't wait for Decker Ranger Month. I'm so excited. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.